Live from Mountain View, California, it's theCUBE. Covering DevNet Create 2019. Brought to you by Cisco. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live for day two coverage. We're winding down at DevNet Create. This is Cisco's conference, this is theCUBE's coverage. I'm John Furrier, your host. Two days of coverage. DevNet is their group, their developer group. DevNet Create is another event that they bring together. We're here with Zeese Caravalla, principal analyst, ZK Research. Breaking it down with me, we're going to do an, uh, a debrief. Break down what's happening at DevNet. Zeese, great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, it's been great. So it's let's great. wrap this up. So what's going on with Cisco? Because you know, we've been following them. I've known Suzy Wee for many, many years, over a decade. Watching what's happened is almost like, I never would have thought this would have been possible almost like 10 years ago. Cisco, the incumbent, bought all these companies, maybe lose grip on the networking. Boom, there's a renaissance with the cloud. They got their mojo back. Developers are up and to the right. It's a yeah. whole new changing of the guard. Well, the network's certainly back. Uh, and in fact, I've been following Cisco a long time. I was a customer of Cisco's actually before I was an analyst. And I've been following the developer initiatives at Cisco since 2001, the first time they tried. And when Suzy took this role, I was as skeptical as they could be, because I saw <laughs> dev developer initiative fail, developer initiative fail, and I said, it's not going to work. The culture inside Cisco is not ready for it. And uh, lo and behold, you know, a few years later, after all our hard work, uh, almost 600,000 members, uh, I'd say it's working. I think one of the trends that's actually helping Cisco is that the IT in the world has kind of come to them. I think they spent a lot of, a long time on the outside looking in, to, you know, being a major strategic IT partner. Uh, that was more the compute vendors, the application partners, but if you look today at the trends around digital transformation, the technology that are driving that are things like Internet of Things, mobility, cloud computing, artificial intelligence, and those are all network-centric paradigms. So in a way, we, you know, we live in a world where everything's connected, and think about it in your own personal life, yeah. John. What can you do without the network? You can't watch movies, you can't yeah. play games, you can't read books, you can't, you can't do anything without the network, and so the network has never been more important, and Cisco has finally opened their network up to the point where developers can actually build things on top of it. So, uh, you know, they used to talk about the network being a platform, and it was really just yeah. a platform other for Cisco stuff, but now it's truly a platform for others to create on it to add value. I mean, I think it's one of the, I think you're totally right on on that. I think it's great analysis because it's like, hey, they didn't really screw it up. They're, they didn't, they had such a great strategic position as a supplier to the networks, and it was like, they wake up when they, oh my God, we're in good position here. Why don't we just <laughs> take advantage of the fact that everything's networked. Network effect, social networks, network constructs, you're totally right. I think this is a game changer. But then, how do you explain the success now? I mean, obviously, new leadership. Was it a leadership change? Was it a realization? What's your analysis of, you know, obviously Susie has a team, she was a catalyst. What was the real um, turning point in your mind? Well, I think uh, leadership change was part of it, and in fact, um, uh, part of, uh, the, the very first thing, one of the very first things Chuck Robbins ever said to me when he took over as CEO, was he promised me that Cisco would listen to customers and if there's something that's good for customers, Cisco wanted to lead that effort. And you could argue that historically, they weren't really on board with things that might have been bad for Cisco, but good for customers. Now they are. And one of the trends that, in order for DevNet to work, one of the things they had to do was open up the network. And conceptually, you might think, well, if we open up the network, now we might put ourselves in a competitively weaker position, but ultimately that's good for customers. You can build applications that add value to that network. And so I think the big culture change with Cisco came in with, with, with Chuck Robbins, uh, their new CEO. I guess not so new anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but, but a willingness to listen to customers, be open, and allow others to co-create on the network. And that's really been the foundation for, for, yeah. for DevNet. And Susie's taken the ball and run with and it. And she's got the chops, technical chops, MIT background, understands tech, knows research, knows how to make it real. She's done that. But it's also the wave that they're on too. They've got some waves that are really in their favor. Yeah. That's right in great position. I mean, IOT, you couldn't ask for. The edge of the network exploding in opportunity now more than ever. I mean, it's been, I mean, Cisco, you, you always heard over the years, we got to move up the stack. There's now the full stack. <laughs> <laughs> got to go to the edge and push beyond the edge. Yeah. Now you got power at the edge, you got tons of opportunity. OT, operational technologies, the software is kind of old, built for hardware. You got IT connected devices and an IOT with GPUs on them, I mean, come on. Yeah. That's, and then Wi-Fi 6 over the top, well, 5G. I think, I think one of the things IOT's done is it's democratized the edge. If you think historically about 
the value of the network. It was commonly thought that the closer you get to the data center, the more value the network had. So at the, the branch edge, less value, data center, more edge. But now you've got a user edge, a client access edge, an IoT edge, a branch edge, a wireless edge, a wired edge. There's so many edges now, and we're creating data at every one of those points. And what that means is we need to do analysis, we need to, you know, to be able to do machine learning at those points, we need access to the data, we need to be able to develop in those points. And so the whole network has now been democratized where I feel there's not one part of the network that has more valuable, it's all valuable. Yeah and DevNet allows customers to be able yeah. to tap into that. Can't value. we just give it all those IOT names and just call it the network? Well, right? it's, that's <laughs> essentially know, what it is. And I think, yeah. we're, we're, and that's a big shift for the industry to start thinking yeah. about. Instead of thinking about the wireless network and the wired network and the data center network, it, you're right, it is just one network and it needs to be treated yeah. that way. And on-prem cloud, still got to move packets from A to B, store stuff as well, state's important. All these things are coming back. It's not really changing what distributed computing used to be. So, you know, given that being said, Cisco, has a position. I want to get your thoughts on something that some, we talk about here at the event. Not many people in mainstream might get this or not. I want to get your take on it. Having the portfolio of products all have APIs is a potential game changer across the board. What's your analysis of what that could possibly turn into? Because you know, having things with APIs on them, every device, is only going to create more connections of data to other devices to share and comp compose and create data. What's the impact for the people watching that might be in Wall Street saying, what's the impact of, of having APIs on every single product? Yeah, well I think it turns Cisco into a platform company, and I think you're right, it is a game changer for the company. I think historically Cisco value was driven by the Cisco product, the product portfolio. It's like the routers, the switches, mm -hmm. things like that. Now that they've opened up their APIs, you're going to start seeing uh, small software companies, large software companies, uh, uh, systems integrators, ISVs, all building things to run the Cisco network, and that creates a fantastic pull-through effect. In fact, I was talking with one of the Cisco execs earlier today about uh, when they do get pulled through, their cost to sale goes way down because it's the application partner that pulls them through. So their cost to sale is really just whatever they pay out to the application vendor. It's, it's very, very yeah. low. Uh, so their margins will go up. You'll see them in bigger deal sizes. And when you're part of that application ecosystem, the, the, there's not as much tendency to, to, to pound the vendor for discounts. Right, so I think it puts Cisco in a much more strategic position uh, because now they're part of something bigger. They're part of company transformation, yeah. they're part of application transformation, and that, that'll have a significant impact both on revenue, but more importantly on margins. And this company will start making That's more That's a great point are. on the pull through and sales cost impact to margin, but also if you also factor in First of all, great analysis, but I want to get your thoughts on the ecosystem impact, because the conversations I've been having with solution providers, they're like, well, hey, I'm coming into retail, and I'm coming into manufacturing and healthcare, and I'm actually deploying solutions. I'm getting higher margins on my stuff. So, you have contribution value going, value contribution going to the partners as well, not just on the pull through, but yeah, Cisco. Well, and that's important, because Cisco's a reseller-led company. It's a partner-led company, I think 90% of their sales go through their partner channel. And uh, for them, they're always trying to drive more value into that. And I think for the resellers too, for their, their partners, they need to understand that if they embrace DevNet and they embrace uh, uh, a, a lot of the applications in the center, they're going to have more strategic relationships with the customers, their deal sizes will go up, they'll have better margins, and it'll put them in a better position as well. So I think the loyalty that you see in Cisco's channel yeah. will continue to grow. And frankly, nobody's got the size of the install base that Cisco has, so it's hard to, it's really going to be hard to compete Let with. Let me get your thoughts on, as, uh, as a study of the, of the industry, the horses on the track, you got other competitors, um, you got good, good opportunities for TAM expansion with cloud, multi-cloud, but I'm not sure that they might see the clear visibility yet into the financial impact of multi-cloud. So the question is, at what point do they start cannibalizing and eating their own to get that pole position as the battleship of the big move happens with Cisco as they, as they have this company transformation, they have huge revenue streams in other markets. Yeah. Uh, telco, is that, is that disrupting anything? Okay, multi-cloud. So, when do they start cannibalizing and eating their own to bring in the new, or is that on their mind? Because I just see, there might be some antibodies that might be inside Cisco trying to say, whoa, this cloud thing's not yet proven, or let's see the revenue visibility into the cloud. Yeah, I think, I think there's probably some of that inside Cisco, and you'll have some fighting between groups. Uh, but I do think it's a net additive for Cisco. I think you wind up, what, what the cloud does is it makes you want network services in more places. I want to, I want to, I need a network, I certainly can't get rid of my network if I'm connecting to the cloud, right? I need to connect to it. But then I'm going to want to have 
uh, the Cisco portfolio of network services available on Amazon or Google or Microsoft Azure, and they have relationships with those companies. So in, in a way what it does is it takes what Cisco started on the company premise and it extends it out to the cloud. And so ultimately what customers want, uh, almost every large enterprise I want, wants some kind of hybrid environment, but the, but the environment has to look the same on-prem and in the cloud, and I think Cisco's in a good position to be able to bridge that gap. And so, I, you could look at it as, as cannibalizing. I don't really think it does. I think it's a net additive to Cisco. I think internally, they may need to restructure things in order yeah. to get some of the business units that might be affected on board with that, but ultimately it's good Some for tweaks, the basically, not hardcore yeah. wholesale changes. Uh, no, not. and they've, they've already done a lot of tweaking. If you look, the leadership team that uh, yeah. it's in place now is completely different than five years ago. So, they've done a lot of realignment and a lot of tweaking, and I think they're ready for this. Horses on the track, competition, Cisco's in good place, multi-cloud seems like a great play. Multi-cloud, inter-networking was a big, coax cables had hubs, you had subnets. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like multi-cloud might be a great similar trajectory of what inter-networking was as a segment. Multi-cloud might seem like a perfect fit for Cisco. Yeah, well multi-cloud extends the, the current network out to, the, out to, out to multiple clouds, uh, and I think what uh, what's important to understand there is it does raise the bar in complexity. A, a multi-cloud network um, is going to be more complicated to run than a plain, simple on-premise network, but Cisco's, this is where Cisco's software business is important, DNA Center, they've done a lot of work in that area to, to, to mask a lot of the complexity. So if customers that use DNA Center, they're going to be able to use that software interface as a way to manage it. And so now instead of having to configure every box one by one, and I was a network engineer, I had to do that. <laughs> uh, now you do it from one central location and push it out everywhere. Yeah. If, they had, if I, they had had that, I would have had a lot more free time. So. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> since you were a network engineer, I used to do those wide area networks myself back in the day. Command line in, telnet into boxes, all that good stuff. One at a time. When you <laughs> look at the vision of programmability of networks, which I love that term, by the way, I've always loved, you know, even when Juniper had Juno, so originally that overlay, I love software mixing in, and I love this notion of programmability. Not yet fully understood, but it makes sense. How do you think that's going to play out? Looking back, we're going to look back in time and say, hey, you know, 2019, this was a seminal moment, or was it not a seminal moment? Is, how important is this programmability going to be for Cisco and the industry? Well, it's extremely important as a way to be able to automate network functions. And um, I, I talked to a lot of the DevNet people here, I think they're starting to warm up to automation. I think there was a little bit of trepidation at first that's, hey, it's going to take my job. But I think what's happening to IT people today is there's so much to do that they simply don't have time uh, to, to do a lot of what they did before. You know what it's like, if I'm running a legacy network, I'm literally configuring every box one by one. So if I got a thousand branches, I got to make a yeah. change, I got to hit a thousand boxes. Right, that's not very efficient. So now I can do it in one place and push it out across and so I think what, what programmability does is it lets me automate and orchestrate things better to the point where the network should be able to run itself and now as an IT person I can go focus on more strategic initiatives. I'll give you an anecdote from a CEO I talked to a little while ago, this was a few months ago. He said, my IT department is becoming less and less relevant to me and I need them to become more relevant. I need them to help me innovate, but they can't because they're busy running the day to day. I need them to find a way to offload that, and that's what programmability does. It lets you offload the things that aren't strategic. Right? And my advice to IT people is if you're doing things today that aren't strategic to your resume or your company, don't do them. Find a way to automate them, and, and that's where programmability and helps. And giving good cost structure in line, but driving revenue is a great resume boost. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> well, doing anything strategic. No one's going to hire you because you can con configure that ACLs through that command line faster than the next guy. That's not a strategic way to drive your, your uh, career. Are we going to see you obviously at Cisco Live as well? I'll be at Cisco Live. Great. Yeah, yeah. Love to get your perspective. In summary, put a bow around DevNet. DevNet career, obviously I'm a big fan of Susie and her team. I've seen it from day one, you as as well. What do they got to do next? Obviously they got a good success formula here. How do they scale it? How do you see them taking this inside Cisco and continuing to explode it internally as well as externally? What's your view on what they, what they should be doing? Well I think it's reached critical mass and I think there was a couple of things they had to, to do to get to this point. And one was obviously build the user base but also get DevNet relevant across the portfolio and it is that. Everything from collab to data center security. I think looking out ahead what's next is they got to find a way to get the general Cisco salesperson to be able to sell this, to understand the value, which I'm not so sure it's there. And also, they have a massive partner community, as you talked about, all the resellers. Yeah. This has to now become part of that partner sale. The partners need to understand, if I sell the concept of some of these advanced applications that run on top of it, I'm going to have better deal flow myself. And so I think now it's about 
the structure's in place, now it's about executing to be able to get the kind of exponential value out of this. This is really to operationalize it to the next level. They did it on a, on a startup budget. They did great success. Thanks for sharing that great commentary. They're breaking it down here, uh, here. <laughs> uh, end of the game, the game's they over. Yeah. <laughs> end of DevNet, DevNet Create. Third year, we've been covering the beginning following Suzy's journey, following Cisco, as developers become more important in the modern era of new applications where network programmability will be an advantage. This is the future they're betting on. Cloud computing, AI, GPUs on all devices, APIs everywhere. This is the Cisco strategy. It's theCUBE coverage, signing off from Mountain View. Thanks for watching.